Hello Internet! Welcome back to some more Basel Stadium Live. I am here alone today. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, I mean, I hope you've enjoyed uh, all the guests that I've had on the channel. Um, I originally intended on, on doing like two weeks of guests, but ended up doing like two and a half weeks. So, uh, you know, thank you to, to all of the guests who, uh, who came on. Uh, in order of appearance, there's my list down here. We had Harry, we had Pokegame, James Beck, uh, Francisco Pardini, um, Envy, uh, we had Edu, we had uh, Cybertron, uh, Jamie Boyd, and uh, Wolf as well, too, who was on with us yesterday. So, what we're going to do is, um, for the rest of this week, so um, today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, I'm just going to use this team. And uh, since, like, all of the all of the videos with this team actually have been with a guest, so I'll, I guess it'll be a chance for me to, to talk to you alone um, in, in secret um, <laughs> about this team. Um, and then uh, from uh, Sunday onwards, uh, no, from Monday onwards, sorry, um, I'll... I'll Use something else. Now I, I've got an idea of what the something else is going to be. Um, I've been testing it. I've been failing miserably with it, but it's got a few things on it that I think are uh, are very different, and I'm going to hope that you'll you'll enjoy it. But um, but but it's not solid. But still, we've got uh, number 267 to kick this video off with, with uh, a pretty standard looking team. Um, so um, yeah, sorry. Like I, I did see like some comments about or I comment about um, like the, the the audio and everything. Like I don't have the best equipment, so uh, um, sorry if my, my videos are a little bit quieter. Um, and you know my guests were a little bit sort of echoey as well. So <laughs> so sorry about that. But um, I, yeah, I don't have a, a headset, this microphone I've had for years and years and years. Um, and also a question: um, Do you because like since this whole month that I've been back. I have been uploading uh, daily as well, literally every single day. Um, do you like that, or do you think that's a bit too much? Uh, would you prefer like you know three videos a week, four videos a week? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that essentially? But um, let's just think about this game then. So pretty standard team. Um, the Gastrodon does worry me a little bit because I can't sing into that. Um, but we'll go with the the fallback lead and. Um, Colossal, definitely. And I'm just thinking, do we want the Flapple for the Gastrodon? Or the Excadrill for um, the other stuff? Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Flapple, but I might regret that if I start to struggle with uh, Togekiss, basically. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess I have done um, yeah, this... By the end of this week, this will have been two weeks worth, you know, two solid full weeks worth with this team. So uh, if you are getting a bit fed up a bit, then, you know, I, you know, apologies. <laughs> Only three more days of it. Um, and then on Friday, I'm going to eat. That looks like Gathlon, is it? Oh, no, that's that's not Gathlon. First first character, I think, one of them is Gathlon. But um, as he's led with Dragapult, I'm threatening with two fairies here. Three fairies on the field. But, um, yeah, on Friday... Friday, no, not Friday, that's today. On <laughs> on um, Sunday's video, um, I will put the uh, the code out for this team. So uh, if you really want to use it yourself, you can do, basically. But in the meantime, let's try and uh, sing in Gravity. Now, if he knows the team, you might swap and bring Gastrodon in. As he's gone for Follow Me there, it could be a Dragon Dance. Um, there's no Gastrodon, so the um, Togekiss is getting a guaranteed Sleep Turn next turn. As it's Dragon Dance, I wonder if it's weakness policy, or if it's something like a Lumberry, which would obviously be not very good. But, you've got to imagine next turn... Yeah, we hit the thing, get our throat spray. You've got to imagine next turn, he will be Dynamaxing, and attacking into Primarina. That's what I imagine. So, we could go for... A sing and follow me here or we could just um, go for a sing with Clefable into the Dragonport and try and get some damage with Free Marina but I think I'm gonna go for follow me here just because he is bound to attack into the um, into the Free Marina is he dragon dancing again or is he phantom forcing yeah okay that makes a lot of sense but now um, 
if the Togekiss doesn't wake up, we get, you know, a, a guaranteed hit on it, essentially, don't we? Either a guaranteed Moonblast or a guaranteed Sing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for a Sing again into it, which might seem a bit greedy uh, and a follow me. But I'm going to do this just because the Togekiss can wake up, and if it does, um, we're putting it back to sleep instead of just Moonblasting into it, which is exactly what happens. So, let's see what happens this next turn then. So we survive. We'll put the Clefable back to sleep. So again, so the Clefable got a first turn. Wake. It's a life orb. Ooh, okay. And we hit the thing. Okay. So that Dragapult is very powerful right now. We kind of wasted our Sash, unfortunately, just for the sake of, um, you know, whiffing into his Phantom Force. And him getting the first turn wake, but you've got to imagine he's just going to go for another Phantom Force. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't um, Dynamax this turn. So this turn we will just try and go for damage. Okay. Something. That's Mimikyu is coming in on that. And it's a Phantom Force, okay. So Mimikyu's Sash is being broken, yeah. Um, Disguise is being broken. And the problem is, this Dragapult is at plus one and is looking very, very scary. So I suppose what I have to do here is go for a Follow Me. Hope that Mimikyu cannot one-shot Primarina somehow, maybe with like a Dynamax Woodhammer or something. And I'm just going to Moonblast this turn into the Dragapult because um, he has got no redirection. And Togekiss has not burnt any turn to sleep now. So we should get the, the knockout on Dragapult here. I don't think Mimikyu can one-shot Primarina unless it is like banded with Woodhammer or, or something like that. Um, but it could be Trick Rooming. It could be Taunting. It's Shadow Sneaking. Okay. Why did I not think of that? So Primarina is possibly not going to survive this. We'll see. Primarina does survive this. Okay, good. So that's one big threat gone. But unfortunately, Primarina is in Shadow Sneak range and Mimikyu should be faster than Primarina so we can't get our Aqua Jet off as, um, you know, before, before it Shadow Sneaks us, essentially. Um, so he's got the, the sleeping, hmm, the sleeping Togekiss in the back. You would think if he had Gaston, then he probably would have brought it in by now. So maybe it's Arcanine? Yeah, maybe it's Arcanine. So I am going to put the Colossal in. I was thinking about putting Flapple in. Yeah, so it is Arcanine. Which means uh, Flapple's not getting intimidated. Unless he shuffles his Arcanine out. Um, whatever he switches in on that right hat slot is going to be weak to rock. So we can we can just go for a the, the rock attack into it. And uh, I guess just going for an Aqua Jet into Colossal forces him to Shadow Sneak the Primarina. Which means he's not getting a whole lot out of this turn with his... I mean he's getting a lot of this turn with his Mimikyu. But he's not uh, you know doing a lot of damage to Colossal. He's not trip rooming basically. And... Yeah, we will just go for the Volcalyph into the Arcanine slot. Um, he hasn't Dynamaxed anything yet, which... Um, okay, so Togekiss, that was smart, because Togekiss hadn't burnt any turns of sleep, and um, and now it's probably going to go down to this attack. I would, I would hope for it to survive, actually, um, with the um, Volcalyph chip damage. That would, be, that would be best case scenario. But I'm just wondering what he's got to, to threaten Colossal here, because... Like, nothing's Dynamaxed. Like, the, the Arcanine could be offensive with close combat. Yeah, okay, so he has Shadow Sneak there. Um, didn't really want to swap Flapple into that. Um, but... Flapple's not looking too great here, but getting rid of Togekiss means that Flapple has a bit of leeway. A bit of wiggle room. I think... Ooh, that's going to be close if it survives the Volcalith or not. Gravity is not up anymore as well, unfortunately. So Flatpole, we are uh, we're hustling. 
Okay, it survives. That's good. I'm satisfied with that. So, Flapple now. Hmm. Mickey could Dynamax and go for the attack into Flapple. But at this point, maybe he needs to Dynamax the Arcanine so that. Um, you know, because I'm imagining his Arcanine is the, the biggest threat to Colossal but maybe a, a, a Max Phantasm um, and a close combat could knock Colossal out, perhaps. But we haven't got Protect on this Flapple, and Flapple is slower than the Mimikyu, so we're kind of stuck at this point. So I think I'm just going to go for a Sucker Punch and a um, another another Volcalith into the um, Mimikyu here. So this is a Mimikyu Dynamaxing. Okay. So maybe he is just going to try and Phantasm through um, Colossal then, which is a, um, a big possibility. Because Arcanine, you know, Arcanine don't normally have a way to deal with um, Colossal, unless it is banded, unless it is offensive. And he's just gone for a max up there. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So I could—I was thinking about going for a Dragon Dance that turn, which, um, in hindsight, obviously would have worked out for us uh, much better. But now Togekiss goes down, Arcanine comes in, and who? And we've only got one more turn of Dynamax. They've got two more turns of Dynamax. So let's see how. How this plays out because, um, ooh, I mean, it's nice that Premier survived um, Colossal's big attack there, but um, getting the Aqua Jet, getting the Aqua Jet into our Colossal would have been amazing for us, especially because he didn't bring Gastodon, which is a little bit strange, as he didn't, you know, as I've got as I've got the Colossal basically. Um, so Flapple here, do I just succumb again? We're at minus one, it's not really going to do too much damage, but um, Dragon Dancing is the alternative. Hmm, I was thinking, I mean, it doesn't really matter because he max guarded, but I was thinking about going for the, the Flare to get the Sun up, but that would have also helped his his, um, his Arcanine out. Although he's not going to go for a Fire Attack into, um, into Colossal, is he? So this turn I'm just going to go for a max Flare. Because if we can knock the Mimikyu out, then... Okay, we hit the Sucker Punch. Decent damage. If we knock the Mimikyu out, then... Okay. Then we might be looking reasonable. But Snarl there... Okay, so yeah, he's, he's knocking out the Flapple. Yeah, so that... I was, I, was, I was best off going for the Sucker Punch there. But now... We need to knock the Mimikyu out. If we do, I think that might be okay, because the Arcanine is probably just stuck snarling here. Uh, if it Flare Blitz, it activates our um, Volcalith, and makes us very fast. Um, you know, Flare Blitz or Heat Wave, Snarl, you know, other, other hacks, maybe Will-O-Wisp or Safeguard or Protect. Um, so this is going to be close. This is, I mean... I don't want to just discount the uh, this Arcanine here, because it could have Bulldoze, maybe, <laughs> you never know. But on their last turn of, their last turn of, um, of Dynamax, I'm just going to Protect. It's best taking a quarter through Protect in, you know, in return for doing nothing than um, taking a full Dynamax attack and um, maybe not even knocking it out as well. But yeah, Arcanine's just snarling away. And it is a Phantasm. Okay, so... That doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but... If he has got Shadow Claw, that can critical hit. Uh, he's probably got Phantom Force, which is going to mean he's going to avoid my first Heat Wave. But he's tiny now. If if there's one more turn of, of Volcliffe, then that will take it out, but I don't think there is. But uh, No, that's the wrong button, Barry. But uh, yeah, there's no more, no more Volcalith here. So, do we Heat Wave? 
or do we ancient power expecting his phantom force? I guess if we heat wave, worst case scenario is he phantom forces, he's only getting another snarl into colossal. So I think I will just heat wave heat, even though I think he is going to phantom force here. So Arcanine is faster than Mimikyu. It's a wood hammer. Okay, no phantom force. Ooh, that does a decent amount of damage. So, okay. He did have wood hammer. And now Colossal is... <laughs> Colossal has got... Not a very big... Ooh, special attack stat. Due to all these snarls. And, um, yeah, so, you know, hindsight, ancient power would have been better there. But now, if he's got the berry, I think this Arcanine might win here. So, yeah, especially because that was 28 damage from that Snarl. That was more than I was expecting. So we need the Ancient Power boost here. <laughs> Which we don't get, unfortunately. And he has got the berry. Okay, so um, if we did go for the Ancient Power into Arcanine, um, the turn I was expecting the Phantom Force, that wouldn't have made any difference anyway. So um, he could miss Snarl here, I suppose. Um... But even if he did, I would need to get the boost again. So, um, yeah, close game there. Um, uh, one thing uh, that <laughs> I quite enjoyed when um, I had uh, Aaron on, when I had Cybertron on, was because, um, you know, we used to be uh, like uh, NBL partners. It was our, our post-match uh, reflection discussion. I quite enjoyed doing that. It <laughs> brought me back to uh, doing NBL again. So what, what could we have done better in that game? What went wrong there? Well, um, he got the first turn wake uh, with his Tugger Kiss uh, early on, which... Um, was a little bit annoying, but uh, uh, obviously, you know, we, we have to uh, have to take that as it comes. But, random, that's what I keep on trying to find. But, we had to knock out the uh, Dragapult. We have 1,918 here. Um, so, yeah, that was fine up until that point. Um, yeah. I think, at the point where Free Marina took all of that damage... Well, that's an interesting looking team. At the point where Primarina took all the damage, um, although we, we had to we had to take that damage to knock out, to knock out the Dragapult, um, we couldn't really do too much from there. Um, we could have Dragon Dance with Flapple on that one turn. That would have helped us out a little bit. But, um, yeah, actually, that is the one turn, isn't it? If we Dragon Dance the turn that we Sug Punched first into the uh, Mimikyu, um, we would have outsped next turn if we'd hit the grab apple. That would have done uh, more damage to it and taken the Mimikyu out because it was on that little tiny bit of HP where it got the wood hammer off on the last turn. So going for the dragon dance on that one turn would have would have won us that game, um, assuming we hit the uh, the grab apple. But um, it doesn't matter. This guy has got a team. Um, Snorlax is something that I haven't really played a whole lot of, but. Um, he's got a lot of Pokemon there that are either weak to water or fairy. So I'm going to go with Primarina and Clefable. Hoping that the Indeedee doesn't have Safeguard. With Colossal, which looks very good here. And um, there's not really too much for Flapple here, so I'm going to go with Excadrill. Okay. Yeah, let's... Um, <laughs> let's uh, it doesn't matter if we win or lose. Although, obviously, with the, you know, we prefer to win here, but... Uh, the team, honestly, the team that I'm at the moment planning on using next week is is very, very bad. <laughs> it's literally just for um, just for the novelty of using, you know, a particular Pokemon. But um, anyway, so you know, lower, lower the rank we've got, <laughs> the, the more chance we've got of winning games with that. So I don't mind losing here. But there's no Indeedee lead, so um, unless this Togekiss is faster and got Safeguard, um, he can't stop us from singing stuff. Um, the Hydreigon surely has to be scared out here. It's a Dragon Dark type against two Fairy types. Um, one thing actually that I see has become a little bit more popular is Dazzling Gleam on Primarina. Since I've got Moonblast on both of these, I could put Dazzling Gleam on Primarina. Um, that would mean both of its big attacks are... Um, yeah, goodbye Hydreigon. Both of its main attacks are um, spread moves, which might not be the best, but uh, we could have Dazzling Gleam on Clefable, I suppose, as well. But just having, um, um, you know, a spread attack and a single, you know, a single target attack. Ooh, I hope this isn't a um, a uh, the Misty Terrain one. 
we'll see. Um, and it's faster as well. But yeah, having the option to um, doesn't gleam ammo burst might be better on some turns. But let's see what happens here then. Big toga kiss. Is it a starfall? So Clefable's faster. Primarina, are you normally faster than toga kiss? Not normally. Well, they are this time. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> so if the toga kiss was faster, uh, if it did go for a uh, starfall that turn. Um, it would have stopped itself from going to sleep, even though it is a flying type, because it's grounded, and uh, that is what gravity does. But now, I guess, we could we could go for... I mean, I think it's going to fake out into the Primarina. Yeah. So I'm thinking we could maybe go for an Aqua Jet, drop the Fable into um, uh, Colossal, which would be fantastic, but I don't think that's going to happen, because he is going to go for the fake out into Primarina. So I think this turn with Clefable we sing into the Incineroar and we'll just go for a Hyper Voice here and then the next turn we will um, we will go for the, um, the Aqua Jet and Colossal Switch. Oh, okay. So we could have done the Colossal Switch this turn but but the way this has played out hasn't been too bad. So plus one Hyper Voice does decent damage Okay, and Togekiss is still asleep. If Togekiss wakes up, which one do you think he'll target? Because Colossal doesn't really want to take an Aqua Jet and a Starfall, especially if he gets a Griggle hit. But I think we will go for it, since both of them are asleep. And Colossal does look very, very good against both of these Pokemon. And if we get the Aqua Jet off, um, Colossal will be threatening the um, Hydreigon in the back a bit more as well too. And we're keeping, we're preserving our Clefable for the Hydreigon in the back as well too. But we'll see if the Togekiss wakes up here. And if it does, if it attacks into Primarina, I'm not too worried. If it attacks into Colossal, I'm hoping he doesn't critical hit us. So this has been a, a brilliant example of, um, it is an airstream, okay, so again resisted, and it is into the Colossal, but that doesn't look like a critical hit, which is good. Um, does the Incineroar wake up? Can it wake up? Did it come in on a, um, on a sing? No, it didn't, did it? But it is still asleep. But uh, yeah, this is um, a good example of how sleep is actually still pretty good in this format, because... You know, we caught him off guard that first turn. He completely wasted his Dynamax there, which is fantastic. Um, we can Dynamax with our Colossal now. And in fact, I think we can just go for a Hyper Voice and um, Max Volcalyph into the Togekiss. Um, we're faster. We're probably going to get two knockouts this turn, unless he swaps anything out. And if he does swap something out, it's taking a lot of damage. And then from the next turn, we can threaten the Hydreigon and whatever is in, in the back. Um with both of these Pokemon too, so sitting in a pretty good position here. Fire typing and uh, fairy typing is a pretty good pin on most Pokemon, so um, you know as well as the Aqua Jet Steam Engine business, um, the combination of Primarina and Colossal does work quite well together, especially since this is a more offensive Primarina. We've got quite a lot of defense investment in it, so we can take you know max attack from Excadrill and stuff like that, but um, it is quite offensive as well. He wakes up, it's actually faster. Wow, okay. That's stopping his throat chopping. Okay. <laughs> More throat chop action. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not devastated that we didn't get two knockouts this turn because it means that, you know, he's only got a limited amount of pressure on this next turn. Um, interesting, the Incineroar was faster than Primarina there. That's a very, very fast Incineroar. And it's Chandler? Okay. Okay. Well, I guess the worst case for us here is he gets Trick Room up, maybe? So, I think I'm just going to go... And I guess, because like unless the um, Incineroar has got Bulldoze, which isn't going to knock Colossal out from here, uh, or Earthquake, there's nothing really for us to worry about with the uh, Incineroar. So I'm just going to go for a, a double here with Aqua Jet and... Volklith into the Chandelure, just in case it's Focus Sash. 
as they commonly are. And then the High Dragon in the back shouldn't be able to beat um, Clefable. And this has got like, even Specs Flash Cannon isn't going to knock us out, especially since we've got the Focus there. But um, Aqua Jet coming in handy for us there too. Chandelier, I'm sorry. I do like you. You ghostly lamp. But let's see if he goes for another throat shop here. No, it's just not. Okay, so. So it's not a scarfed Incineroar, as I, I have seen. I have seen one. But it's just very, very fast instead. Let's see if he's got the berry. No berry. Okay. So gravity is returned to normal now. We can sing and we can. Um, hyper voice since the throat chop has worn off and so we're just going to go for a moonblast into the hydragon and it doesn't really matter what we do into the incinero do we want the sun up do we want the grassy terrain up um, not really so we'll just go for a volcalia into the incinero even if it has protect it's going to get knocked out through the protect and we'll see if the Hydreigon has got anything to touch Primarina. Like, he might just be going for an Earth Power here into Colossal just to just to get the knockout. Yeah, just to say, haha, I actually knocked you out. <laughs> but, yeah. But, sorry Hydreigon. You're not going to survive. A Moonblast. Even Roselli Berry. I don't think we'll survive this since we are plus... Actually, we're not, we're not plus one because um, he snarled us, but he's life orb. So, goodbye Hydreigon. Okay, so reasonably successful and actually over the last um, you know week and a half with all the guests this team has been reasonably successful hasn't it? I think we've won just sort of as a you know a, a, an estimating figure I think we've won like 70% of the games or so we've done pretty well with it and some of the games that we've lost actually were you know st stupid losses as well like yesterday's but um, yeah I hope you've enjoyed this um, I will be swapping team for um, Monday I will put the code up for this team on Sunday's video so stay tuned for that but um, please comment and like. I should say all this because there's probably like a third of the people that viewed this video watching this by now, if, if that. I should say this at the beginning, really, like everyone else. If you've, if you've liked this, please like and share and, and comment and subscribe and, and uh, do all that, all that lovely business that you can do. Um, if you think I deserve it anyway. But um, I will see you tomorrow for um, the penultimate, the second to last episode with this team. But uh, goodbye for now. I'll see you then.